Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingrid and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to continue with Mitsubishi D700 drive We're going to be setting up the drive in remote control using a 2-wire and 3-wire controls and also we're going to be using a potentiometer and uh, working through some parameters as well and if you haven't seen the last video where we, where we commissioned the drive and run the drive in local mode that video is going to be in description below also all the manuals and everything like that also is going to be there in the description below so before we get started I just like to a buyer and seller of industrial aerobics parts if you've got parts to sell get in touch if you're looking for a part Definitely get in touch with us as well. You can get in touch with us with YouTube, uh, our eBay page, our eBay page, or, or our website. Whichever way works for you, you'll be able to do that. So, without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, so the two wire system has been all set up and ready to go and before we get started I'll show you a couple of parameters that are uh, I think it was worth worthy to show and pay attention to and uh, one of them is uh, operation selection uh, operation mode selection uh, We're in a parameter 79 where you can sort of play around and how you want your modes to work So it's pretty cool so, uh, things you can do so definitely check out parameter 79 and obviously under default we are going to be using a zero where we can jump with uh, between uh, local and remote with the PU button but there's other ways you can control it and work with it so definitely check out parameter 79 another one I want to mention is parameter 73 where is the analog input selection uh, which is there where you can as you can see uh, on a default we are actually not doing that uh, 0 to 10 volts uh, we are actually doing in uh, 0 to 5 volts for the Mitsubishi drive but if you're using different, no, not potentiometer, but something different that we, uh, where, where you can control it from other uh, analog source or analog voltages and things like that, and you do need uh, 0 to 10 volts, you can change that and uh, your uh, system will be accepting that. So uh, at the moment for the analog terminal uh, input 2, it's outputting 5 volts, so, but you can still uh, uh, change things around to, uh, to play with the 0 to 10 volts and pass on, on all other bits in here with the reversal operations and things like that and current things like that. Uh, so definitely check out the parameter 73 if you want to play out, play around with the different types of uh, uh, frequency controls. And our basic switch in here is uh, again very rough and uh, uh, very basic in in a way and uh, what I want to mention in there if you see these uh, S1 and S2 and SC systems uh, if you're not using uh, some sort of a uh, system that I'm using down here where I have e stop on here that I can smash and the whole power will be removed from the motor you do are uh, very strongly suggested you know, from compliance points as well you have to use these S1 and S2 uh, um, as a, what they call something uh, safety safety circuits for the S1 and S2 so you are advised to do it and you can find out find all that we were spoke about about in the last video so definitely check out in the manual uh, how to set these things up if you are not using some way of uh, isolating the uh, motor away from the drive so uh, me for the demonstration purposes I have uh, put a e-stop on here uh, because I want to uh, if you are really lazy and I know I've seen trust me I've seen a lot of people never use this very used because they have some external ways of controlling it and even in a private place people just don't bother using this which is as i said you've got to have I'll, I will, I'll have a link in the description below how i set up this system in case you're lazy to set that system up and things like that so uh, let's get uh, to actual wiring it's quite straightforward uh, the source is a pc source uh, from the terminal inputs down here it comes to uh, it comes to your stop button down here it comes goes go through the stop button the e-stop button and it goes to the normal open contact, which is select the switch and goes back to STF, uh, which is uh, which is down there. And potentiometer, I am using a one kilo ohm Siemens potentiometer. Again, you will have a part number uh, in the description below uh, if you wish to get one of these. And uh, one, it's actually quite straightforward. One goes to ten, two goes to uh, two, and uh, five goes through three and inputs in here which is quite straightforward and that's pretty much how the two wire system can be set up and let's check it out how that works oh we can't do that because you need to go into a uh, external mode then you can select that and by using a start and stop and that's pretty much if you see down here 
when I click that, at least I have a faster way to disconnect. If you are completely lazy and don't want to uh, do anything else and just to have something, I at least use that. Um, but be aware if you release it, the dry will start back up again. That's why I say I strongly advise using some of those. Uh, that, ladies and gentlemen, will be a uh, two wire system. It's quite straightforward, nothing really there. And as I, another thing is, if you let's say the frequency is down and your selector switch is on and a uh, run is flashing that's purely because he's looking for frequency so uh, that's because i've actually seen online people researching quite a lot run run is flashing but nothing's happening it's nothing happening because there's nowhere the frequency source is coming from so that's pretty much if that's happening you know you know the frequency is not being sent uh, or or in there uh, telling what to do so definitely check that one out so uh, as we've done that so let's crack on with the three wire system and uh i'll show you how that works Alrighty, for the three wire control, as you can see, I have a quite a lot of wires, extra a lot, a lot extra wires in here, and I will run you through all of them. But I have built the station like that with the potentiometer, start, stop, direction, and e stop. E stop is connected to uh, SC, SC, S2, and SC ports, which are uh, sort of a, a good way. Of excellent way of drive knowing when to shut down in emergency so i could talk to you in a while in a minute the rest of it is well going to show you how that is done so before we get to the parameters let's go through the wiring as you can see in here uh this is my uh e-stop button down here where i've got a uh, s a c and s2 coming in here i'm not using s2 for any switching so i'm just going to keep it uh, keep it closed at all times but the one i am switching is s1 so in event of an emergency if you see down there if i click the emergency stop the drive goes into error saying this is it and it shuts down i'll show you demonstrate that in a minute how that goes but when you release it it will physically ask you to go to the drive unless you are pre-programmed one of the buttons down here one of the inputs down here with a button reset if you will you'll be able to reset it by clicking stop reset button the red one in front of the panel and uh, other than that when you get to the wiring uh, for the wiring you can see down uh, down in here i've got the uh, uh the pc power uh, cable coming to a normally closed com uh, contact which is my stop button in here it goes via normally closed and then it got the, then then the after normally closed one cable goes back and it goes to the rl which we're going to talk in a minute why we're using that rl and uh, then it distributes the power to all the other buttons in uh, normally open normally closed one's for start one is for the uh, direction selection and uh, obviously the start button goes to str and uh, the selector switch goes to uh, um, not the, the start button goes to SDF and the selection button goes to STR. So that's how pretty much that wiring done. And obviously, I have here is our potentiometer, which is still in full function in this uh, setup. And before you want to start up with the uh, with the uh, uh, parameters, there's a couple of ways you can do the wiring. The one wiring I have done there's the parameter. It's on the page 119. Uh, I have chosen uh, this type of setup for my three wire control, which you have to change the parameter 250 to 8888. So I'll show you that in a minute. And it sort of explains you down here what happens when you start changing things around. So, and there's another way you can go is this way, which, which you leave it in a default. I like the way that I can change direction and start that way. And also both ways are equally good it's depending how you like to do your wiring the wiring what we'll show you down here is done by this diagram and another parameter you're going to need to, uh, need to change is uh, you need uh, to create some sort of uh, you need a latching latching signal which is the stop signal and then the uh, inverter drive itself the latching stop signal is as you can see from the graphs in here go down to the stop start cell holding selection is number 25 and that can be programmed pretty much on all of the inputs uh, well, well, when it comes down to RL, R, uh, M, R, H and STR and uh, STF. Can we do an STF? I'm pretty sure we can do an ST, STF. But I have chosen my RL. That's the one I reprogram because I'm not going to use it. Well, and I'm definitely not going to reprogram STF and STR because I need both of them. So uh, RL is my stop signal and that's exactly what it does. And to do that, you need to go the whole all programming. Let me just change that back to that. 
all programming for the inputs starts from 178. So in here, so uh, there you go. And the one I program for the RL is 180, and I already have changed that to 25. So that allows me to latch my start signal as per diagram I just showed. So pretty much those are the two parameters you know, and also I'll show you that 250 or 250 and I changed that to 888. So that allows me to use that diagram which I showed you already. And that is pretty much will allow you to fully run the drive and let me demonstrate how that works. So on the start, on the start, depending where you where your selection is, because at the moment I have no uh, direction selected so it will work in a uh, forward uh, direction so by clicking start ooh, we are in a PU mode says so by clicking start and obviously it will go forwards and when you let's say when you want to click it that way it's not going to work unless until you press the stop and then press the start again and now the motor is going to go the other way if you want to work like that so uh, let me just get a bit closer so you can see the numbers so, here we go so that's pretty much how this is, uh, system works and obviously there's other 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 uh, other diagram which i'm not going to be showing because that video will be dragging on way too long but you're pretty much uh, hopefully you understand the gist that all the inputs and even the relays and even analog things and things like that and even the the S1 and S2 and SCs all of them can be configured in the in a inverter drive itself. The manual is self uh, self really good actually no just in there. The it is uh, explains you everything what you need to do if you are bothered to read around and then go through it. There's so much more to what you see and meet the eye. There's pretty much you can preoccupy the whole front panel with all the inputs and outputs. But for the for the basic setup, I, I would strongly just oh, that's plus I'm gonna show you what happened. So when your drive is fully running, by clicking that, look at that, it shut down the drive and you are pretty much safely have uh, removed of the power from the motor. And by resetting this said again, even you remove the e-stop, you will need to. Ooh, one of the things is that when you need to go and reset it so the drive it goes back to normal and because you're doing three wire system the motor will not restart unless you start the start button again that is a pretty cool way of doing it you still can you can you can have reset button if you want to one of the way you can pre-program the rm to be your reset button play around ladies and gentlemen there is so much you can do and this is still the skeleton version of the fr series this is the lower tier of the fr series and uh, there's a lot more can be done in an uh, uh, e, e, this is the D series and the E series and, and it's the A series and some other series I can't remember. The more they go, the higher the, 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 the complexity the whole system can be run. But that, ladies and gentlemen, will be it for a uh, two wire, three wire control and potential. That hopefully that is helping you out, getting you where you want to get. And uh, if you liked the video, please smash that like. If you didn't, smash the dislike. Uh, comment below what you like, what you didn't like, and uh, if you want to criticize or say something's right and something's not right, definitely let me know. Uh, always constructive criticism is always welcomed and uh, always uh, helps me out to progress better videos. Other than that, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.